Next up, I would like to invite Mr. David Chiam, founder, CEO, and executive chairman, Mind Chance Preschool, to present the keynote on creating a wow brand for your business. By speaking on the Mind Chance journey, David will be sharing with you on how you too can create a wow brand and experience for your customers. Over to you, David. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much. I don't think either one of us would have, you know, really imagined how much the world has changed and contemplated, you know, what and the extent of what has changed. But you know what? Um, one of the things that uh, makes human beings who we are is that we are able to truly continue to evolve, and um, that's one of the things I'll be talking about. Uh, how do you create wow brands? Yeah, um, and um, so. The two key areas that I'll focus on today uh, in a snapshot is um, one is I mean, how does one create wild brand and also then more importantly, I think, I th sustain it. So I won't be diving into you know, what mind champs, particularly you know, the details of every strategy, but I'll, I will highlight three key areas, um, three particular key areas, fundamental that, you know, that I believe are so critical to how to not just create. In fact, we, we started with literally zero, nothing. Um, it was just you know an idea the, of filling in gaps in society. Um, and um, that was all you know, we had. We started from zero. Um, so I'll focus on how do you take from zero to creating the wow brand and then, but more importantly also how we sustain, as I mentioned, um, in three key years, okay? All right. Well, let's begin. In fact, in, um, you know, on the journey of Mind Champs, I've had the privilege of working with some of the amazing minds of the world. And one of them, who is our chair of research himself, is Professor Alan Snyder. In fact, as a scientist, he's already made breakthroughs for mankind in three different fields. Um, you know, if you're a scientist or a researcher, if you make one breakthrough in your life, it's already quite you know, amazing, but he's done three. And there's one thing that I really learned from him when we first met some over 20 years ago, and that was this. And he said this, um, that it is one thing to have a great idea. You know, it's one thing to have a great idea, but it's another thing to get it to the world, um, to better get it to the world. And uh, in fact, that's quite profound. You know, as we know, there are many people with many great ideas and uh, we don't see those great ideas, you know, making impact to the world or sustaining itself. Um, and then when I thought about that deeply, I then thought, it's, if it's another thing getting it to the world, then it's another thing, yeah, to be able to sustain it, uh, sustain it at a level of excellence. And that's another thing. And um, anybody who's been, you know, a leader in any field would know that. These are two critical aspects of, you know, how do you sustain is so critical to just to create and get it to the world. Now, learning from that, within the three parts that I'll share today in a snapshot, the first part we realized was that we had to get, in order to create anything before it even gets to wow, you know, before you even get to wow, you have to have something uh, critical first, that is, what is, you know, the DNA of an organization is critical. That's the first question we had to define for ourselves. What's our DNA, uh, you know, in the whole evolution, you know, of all the, you know, different aspects and species within, you know, evolution of, you know, throughout history. Um, those who have the strongest DNA and can adapt are those who then obviously can sustain, yes, um, to them changes of the environment. So the first one I'll mention for us at MindChamps was we had to make sure our DNA was clear. Now, why do we even coin this concept for ourselves as DNA? Because over the many, you know, uh, challenges that any organization will go through, you will be tempted by so many different things along the way, um, you know, and those, tem tem those temptations are very, very tempting. In, in fact, every different direction, every day when you make decisions, you'll be tempted to make certain decisions. But then when you come back to what is the right decision for the organization, you 
come back to what is our DNA? What are we about? You know, and for us, it was very important. So that was the first thing that we had to define. What's our DNA? Yeah, and I'll give you a quick summary of, in a way, what we were, you know, quite clear on. That was our DNA. And that is to fill in gaps in society, but what sort of gap? And we saw that the gap that we wanted to focus on and what we're about was to actually transform education globally. We saw that there's a gap that is essentially a lot of us five days a week and throughout the whole school system were learning the what to learn, but rarely the how and the mindset of the learner was missing. So it can be encapsulated in what we call the three minds approach. And I'll walk you through this model very quickly. So what are we about? Okay. What's our DNA to why, why we do what we do? Okay. The very first thing is we have to recognize that if we're going to fill in gaps in education globally, we have to understand where the education system came from and what's been the evolution. So we actually call this uh, in our book, Brian and I wrote in our book, we call this the concept of the evolution of education in three movements. Uh, the first movement we recognize in education was where during the Industrial Revolution was when education first, you know, started. In fact, there was no formal school system prior to the Industrial Revolution. Um, and so we recognize that in, during the Industrial Revolution, that was a century of the factories. And during the century of the factories, if you couldn't read and write, then you consider, you know, obviously uneducated, you're even illiterate and uneducated. So you couldn't read and write, you couldn't learn the content. So content at that time was critical for education. You had, we had to memorize and learn a lot of content, put it into our minds. And if you could have more content yeah, in your mind, uh, in the brain, then you're more educated. That was during the Industrial Revolution. That's how school system began, by the way. Yeah. Now, then the next major revolution came, which then made education have to evolve to the next level. And that is this. The next was the 20th century. What, what was the major next revolution, do you think? That's right. It was the information revolution. And we call that the century of the machines and the computers. So suddenly we had these computers that can store the information that during the Industrial Revolution, when you were, you know, drilling all that information uh, into the brain, into the mind, you were more educated. But now we've got these computers. These computers can store all this information. So we can, at a click of a mouse today, access any child of the world, any country right now, can access information at a click of a mouse more information than anybody can can drill and you know into their brain in terms of those facts and so that was when education had to evolve to the next level and that was the 20th century now when we started mind champs in 1998 in sydney australia as a small very small research team we saw that in the 21st century education needed to evolve again and we thought that it wasn't changing fast enough um, while technology is leaping forward. I mean, if you think about it, the smartphones have been around more than just a bit of more than 10 years. Kids today, everything to them moves that quickly uh, and they can access information at a click of a mouse instantly. Now, and so we recognize that content alone, drilling in the content during the Industrial Revolution is no longer going to give us the edge. Secondly, thinking alone these days is not, is not even enough in the world where in the 21st century, AI is obviously already able to outthink even the world's number one chess player. So we saw that in the 21st century, we had to create a new revolution for education. And we wanted to be the, you know, the ones creating this, where we realized that in the 21st century, it's no longer about the century of the you know, information revolution. It's now, in fact, what we call the century of the mind where AI is now a big part of our lives. Every time a child comes to our preschool today, we always say that by the time your child faces the real world, that's about 20 years time. And what year is 20 years time? And you're right, 2041. That's it. I mean, what kind, what kind of mindset do you need for 2041? Well, no expert can tell us what the world will be like, but we know that 241, yeah, Content alone, no longer going to give us the edge. Thinking 
is not also while these two are critical it's not gonna be enough so in the world of AI we need to nurture mindset so we've gone from content to thinking and at MindChamps we said 21st century we need to create a mindset model of learning of course content and thinking is critical but how do you nurture mastery of maths science any subject any content but develop the mindset of the learner at the same time in fact education has been missing that as a gap you know we've been drilling all this information but we took you know away the love for learning we didn't realize that it was about the relationship of the content to the learner that then creates the type of learner they are whether the child says i hate maths or i love you know maths depends on how we nurture and how we obviously teach them how to learn to create the right mindset that relationship to learning is everything that mindset is what they take with us now so when we realized it was about mindset we then had to go much deeper and we had to ask ourselves what kind of mindset does the world of 21st century need not just one mindset and by the way the academic mind alone is no longer relevant we realized it was beyond that we need three minds and the first mind that we realized was critical is in fact what we at MindChamps Nurture called the champion mind in fact all of these three areas I can proudly say that with our global team of research we are actually the only organization globally and we can say this proudly today that has spent over 20 years of research and studies on these three areas of the three minds and the first one is the champion mind how do we nurture every child to be their own champion yeah it's not to be not to be better than others but to be to be the best version of who we can be um, now champion mind was the most critical in fact that was done during sydney olympics uh, and beijing olympics as a study which prof snyder hosted to study world champions and how do we distill those ingredients from business politics art sports and science champions and how do we instill that into you know uh, the curriculum and nurture that from young okay the second mind we realized a critical was the creative mind how do we nurture a mindset again from young that is able to see the world through multiple perspectives with, with flexibility and fluency because the world we live in silos uh, if we lay those neural pathways from early years and that's the critical time then the child has those neural pathways to make connections when they are required to especially in today's world um, the third mind is the learning mind and as i mentioned earlier that's about building the love for learning but you can only love learning if you know not just what to learn but the craft and the art of learning how to learn when michael jordan summed this up beautifully in a way in terms of learning he said you can practice shooting eight hours a day eight hours a day but if your technique is wrong then all you do is become very good at shooting the wrong way now so at school what kind of techniques are we nurturing in terms of learning therefore we had to this the you know research concept formation in terms of the neuroscience of how does the brain lay concepts and learn and synthesize new ideas and concepts because to the human mind when we're learning any any subjects at school it's all about concept formation um, and so that was the third component the learning mind so Back to what we talked about earlier number one was the dna at mind champs we had to clearly define what are we about yeah and that's why you never catch mind champs doing for example we, we we don't do things like tutoring for example per se we don't believe in drilling the child more of the same thing because in society if five days at school hasn't worked yet what makes us feel that forcing the child doing the same thing for the sixth day is going to work in fact sometimes that creates a negative impact you know so therefore that was very clear and throughout the last over now almost 23 years we've been very clear what's our dna what are we about um, and i'll dive in a little bit later at the end when we close on in terms of when your dna is aligned to values it becomes unshakable yeah um, because a dna could be an intellectual thing but a dna without the values uh, can be very easily distracted okay that's the first one number one number two how to then make sure that we sustain the wow brand yeah the second is standards um, 
And to me, this is critical. In fact, there is no brand without standards. In fact, when you, when you buy into a brand, and whether it's a wow or not, it's because you do have, if not even just conscious, but non-conscious connection with that brand in terms of the quality and the standards of expectation of that brand. Correct? Yeah. Um, now, so therefore, standards is critical. But you see, we recognize at MindChimps that in order to really sustain a certain level and create that you know, experience, Standards, we had to get, you know, the fundamentals of that right because every single different you know, person has a different interpretation of standards. Um, in fact, all of us have different, you know, expectations of different aspects of, you know, and different ways that we rate standards. One person might rate something a 9 out of 10, while another person rates it only about a 6 out of 10. Uh, and each, of one, each one of us has our own perspective on standards and particularly even when we rate things, yes? Um, so at MindChamps, we had to recognize that if it's about standards as well, we had to create and not just rely on external, you know, uh, ways of assessing ourselves, but we had to get and create our own standards that our team globally can come back to and reassess and continue to assess ourselves. Because if every single person has different interpretations, then what are your standards? So we then had to you know, work very hard as a team to create what we call our own champion, linked to our brand champion, yeah, gold standards. And that was so critical. We had to create our own Mind Champs champion gold standards. Um, and in fact, with champion gold standards, we were able to then um, train our team members globally to align on what we mean by standards. Um, now, I'll give you, without you know, spending too much time on it, uh, because we don't have that much time today, I'll just give you an example of what we do. And so, apart from creating our own champion goal standards, because it was amazing, we recognized that globally, there was no strong global standard that we could use that could assess quality of a preschool globally that was you know recognizable so we created our own ch champion goal standards and as you can see all of our team leaders uh, you know go through this and understand that we have a set of clear standards that we're trying to, to, to you know to adopt um, and these are examples I'll, I'll you know just walk you through yeah um, as you can see the uh, the th aspects that we look at within the uh, you know, standards is there are three key areas. First is leadership, you know. Second, culture and relationships. You know, that's critical. And the leadership is that underpins everything. And thirdly, teaching and learning. You know, how do we continue to raise standards on all three areas? Leadership, culture and relationships, and teaching and learning. Now, so this is an example of what we do at MindChaps, okay? Um, today, rather than me just tell you about it, let me give you some examples of what we actually do. Okay, I'll run you through this quickly, okay? So for example, every six months we have a survey because we can keep on saying that we, you know, what we do is quite special, but it doesn't mean anything unless we hear directly from the people who are experiencing us, yeah, okay? Now, so, Every six months, we have a survey where all the parents in our schools truly get to give us our report card. And, you know, we must reflect on our, you know, performance from what these parents, how they assess us. And then, if you just go back to the first slide, there's, yeah. Um, first important thing is to re realize that we have actually um, we're very, you know, particular about statistics. Um, in any survey, yeah, uh, you're going to have a certain number. And in the latest survey, in fact, our survey, we take it that seriously. And I, I would say that we're, we're actually the only organization, uh, in, particularly in our education space, that um, got KPMG Singapore to actually audit and verify our results. 
of these parent surveys. Yeah? Um, because there are many surveys that when you look at it, you're not sure of the integrity of it. So we actually got KPMG Singapore to verify this. Now, first and foremost, you can see 83.88% responded. And that's a very important number. Yeah? You've got to have a certain number before the, the data makes, you know, has integrity. Okay, so almost 84% responded. Yeah? We dive very deep. One, we look at the environmental sur you know, survey from the parents. Uh, two, the hygiene practices. Yeah. Three, even the nutrition uh, within the school. Four, communications, how parents feel about communications, open communications with them so that they know what's really, really going on. Five, survey of all the teachers. For example, within that, we even dive in quite deeply. Uh, look at all the different teachers from the English teacher to if the centers have a Chinese teacher, Chinese teacher, to the assistant teachers as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then number six, we look at the detail of every core curriculum. Uh, for example, the unique mind champs reading and writing, natural literacy program, how parents rate it, uh, fun with language, inquiry teaching and learning, uh, numeracy strategies. Yeah. These are all core curriculums programs the love for Chinese language. And then seven, then separately from the core programs, we also have assessment for the enrichment programs like neuro moves, creativity and theatrical strategies, music for the mind, and gourmet moments, for example. Uh, we even go into that level of detail to take the real pulse on how we're performing in every single program. Okay, now, and then overall, parents then get to rate their child's overall educational development. Uh, for that six months and you know we're proud to say that the latest survey of you know this year we actually got a rating of 98 percent rated us as excellent and good verified by kpmg singapore yeah and so that's what we mean by standards so you see to me one can go out there and you know do many many things to create you know wow experience but ultimately got to check ourselves and we do this regularly every six months to then see where the gaps. And in fact, how do we not get that 2%? Um, and we've got to dive into that, that 2% that we didn't get excellent and good. And what do we need to do to lift that um, and understand that deeper to make sure we lift that, you know, and keep on rising in standards. Okay, third part, and to sum up, to sustain, you know, the wild brand. And that is, we've got to keep on evolving. Um, I mentioned earlier that the species throughout evolution, the ones who have the strongest DNA, yeah, that can adapt to the environment, those are the ones that sustain. Um, in fact, the ones that don't have that strong DNA, uh, in order to sustain the changes of the environment, will die. Same as certain brands around the world, as you know. There are some brands that were around and before you know it, uh, it actually faded away. Um, now, and so keep on evolving is number three. And this is another aspect that we focus on clearly. Um, but in an organization, keep on evolving means what? It means to, at MindChamps we say to stay ahead of the curve, to keep on staying ahead of the curve. Yeah. We must keep on you know, lifting our standards, but at the same time, we can't be just happy and content with where we're at. We've got to keep on, you know, and especially if we're in education, we've got to keep on inventing and researching and creating in terms of innovating new approaches. In fact, we always say that in education, the moment we stop learning and, you know, researching and creating, we stop teaching. Because as you can see, I mentioned earlier, when we were at school, you know, compared to how kids, kids, kids' minds today process information has changed so much that we can't even imagine. You know, gone are the days where you can tell a kid to shh, sit down, be quiet. You know, the kid looks at his book, the book's not moving, there's, you know, everything's static. Uh, the child is so used to so many things moving that when we say sit down, be quiet and, and look at the book, but there's nothing moving in the book. His eyesight's not so used to seeing things that are static for so long. Now, so as you can see, we've got to keep on researching, 
and understanding the latest environment in order to create and innovate. And um, this is the third aspect, number three. Now, again, I'll just mention, share with you one example of what we've done um, to show you. So I'm gonna show you this short clip. And this is truly revolutionary. And I say this not lightly. If, in fact, in education, it is very rare to be able to patent an approach. You can trademark things, yeah, trademark things. You can trademark it, but it's very difficult to patent an education approach. And in fact, it's only after the last two decades of our work and research, deep empirical research, that together with the world-renowned, not just Prof. Snyder, but also uh, Emeritus Professor Larry Scripps, who was at Harvard and chaired the Conservative New England in Boston, together with our entire team that we were able to synthesize an approach that is now patentable. Um, now, why is it so critical to stay ahead of the curve? Because you know it's so important that everything we do, we must be able to take it to another level and adapt to the environment. Um, so this, this short clip will share with you that when we then were ready to launch this, we had to pilot it first after over a decade, yeah, over, over, in fact, almost 14 years of work. Three years ago, we piloted into one school, the program. And then last year, we did into four schools. This year, we've rolled out into 25 schools. And next year, we'll be rolling it out island-wide in Singapore. Um, and then we're even then studying the results and researching the results of the students, who, how they perform in a world standard assessment, you know, for children for mathematical and uh, language and literacy, to see how they perform globally for those who've gone through this approach three years, two years, and one year. And then those as well who did not have this program, so-called in terms of research intervention, so we've got different doses of intervention plus those who did, had no intervention. And that is another research that we're doing. Yeah? Um, so we're very big on the depth of the research that's very linked to our DNA. What are we about? Everything we do can't be just be based on opinion. We have to be true to invest in research and continue to upgrade. Yeah. So let's take a look at this clip. Ooh, one. Ooh, one. A revolution in education through music. Music cognition is distributed across our entire brain. If music is all over our brain, where should it be in our schools? It should be absolutely everywhere. Good. And why should we teach it at the core of our preschool curriculum worldwide? The mission of MindChimps Music is to build the musically integrated mind that optimizes the interconnected brain of every child. It's called the Mind Champs Music Learning Revolution. Join Emeritus Professor Larry Scripp, the creator and director of Mind Champs Music. We are creating the music, singing the words, keeping the rhythm, all the while listening to the harmony of the hemispheres. Along with experts in the field of music cognition and curriculum innovation behind our work. We call this multiple, simultaneous, interdisciplinary cognition. That's what music really is. Mind Champs Music, insights in this revolution in education through music. Brought to you by Mind Champs Preschool. As you can see, um, you know, being able to truly integrate where everything, literacy, numeracy, you know, music, language, all of that, uh, social, emotional, all of those aspects that becomes one, the um, development of the child is just exponential. And in fact, this is, this is truly revolutionary, which is why uh, it's a program that we're able to now patent. Yeah? Um, and uh, it's something that is so critical, as I mentioned earlier, that um, the third aspect of how do we sustain a wow, obviously, brand, is to be able to truly not just be clear with our DNA from day one, not be shaken by you know, distractions, to make sure that our standards, and as I mentioned earlier, with standards, we had to even create you know, our own model to deeply assess and reflect ourselves 
constantly um, in order to continue to improve and reflect ourselves. And then thirdly, you know, we had to make sure that within that, you know, we have to keep on evolving, uh, stay ahead of the curve. Thank you very much. Thank you, David, for the interesting presentation.